All right. So Richie Jacobs, he asked me to look into Alan Didio. All right. And so let's do this here. If I refresh, the video should play. Tonight, God is about to expel every irritant from your life and everything that is hindering the fire of his presence from burning in your heart and in your family. Listen, because there is a prophetic word on this program from a general of the faith who has authored more than 100 books, including New York Times bestsellers like Culturally Incorrect. He's the host of a very popular program that's aired for decades called Breakthrough the pastor of World Harvest Church, he's preached landmark historic messages like Repairers of the Breach, Raise the Standard, Where Have All the Preachers Gone? And he has authored a brand new book called Revival If. This book is so powerful and so important. We're actually making this a special offer for a gift of any size because we just want to get this book into your hands. If you go to EncounterToday.com and so into the special offer, we're going to send this book to you because it will change your life, as well as this interview with the general himself, Dr. Rod Parson. <clears throat> Doc, doctor. Yeah. He's not my doctor, I guarantee you. Now, what I notice here in this intro is that he's selling this book. This book will change your life. He's not, and he's not talking about the Bible. He's talking about some goofy book written by some goofy pastor who calls himself doctor. Now, I got a big problem with that. Now, and if the this doctor is Dr. Rod Parsley. Everything God is doing, everything God will ever do, he does with a power that is already in a sea. Hallelujah. Look at somebody and tell them my seed's oily. What? My seed's oily. My seed's oily. If you... Oh, my God. Uh. Dear friend, Pastor Stephen Fritt. and you might want to have this conversation things like how many kids do we want to have I mentioned it a moment ago but I would suggest don't even really set a number on it have one and see what your unique genetic combination produces before you extrapolate that decision the Bible says be fruitful and multiply this guy says have one So, like, get the sample, sample the sausage, and then decide, do you want to buy the whole... What? I screwed that up. Here, here's another one. Elder Bill Canfield is like, oh my God, Verdict's having a heat stroke right in front of me. Because it's so sexy to say that your breakthrough is coming. But can... Uh, what? I, I don't know what these guys are teaching. Um, it... To me, it's abomination. It's ridiculousness. And it's another example of people watching too much Cinemax and just relating everything to sex. <clears throat> and it, it, to, you look, to me, when I read the Bible and it says, Know this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lust and I hear uh, Dr. Rod Parsley talk about his oily seed and this guy talking about how sexy it is to make a breakthrough to me I'm connecting the I'm connecting the dots here right I mean this is this is what we see going on firsthand and uh, again in um, Second Peter. No, that's not it. What am I looking for? Excuse me. 
in first or first I say first in Jude verse 18 it's not in, in it's not in Jude 2 it's in Jude 1 just in case you're completely unfamiliar with the Bible it says how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust and to me uh, what are you guys selling here this is just ridiculousness All right. now to go back to the intro here you notice there's no mention at all of the Bible there's only the mention of the of a book they want to sell and um, they go so far as to say this book will change your life not talking about the Bible talking about the book that they writ the book that they wrote right <clears throat> in 2nd Peter chapter 2 verse 3 it says and through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not and their damnation slumbereth not now this is essentially what they're doing is that they're making money off of you and they're using feigned words and in my opinion this fits perfectly but there were false prophets false teachers of God also among the people even as there shall be false teachers among you who privately shall bring in damnable heresies even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction and many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of and we saw that with this guy here saying don't have more than one child just have one child and then stop even though the Lord has commanded us to be fruitful and multiply now oh, I'm sorry I can't spell so anyways I mean this is goes all the way back be fruitful and multiply right Bless, he's talking about the, the creatures there, but he says that to man too. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply. Replenish the earth and subdue it. Have dominion. All right, so anyways, I, you know, I don't know anything about this Didio, but if he's promoting false heretics, you know, false teachers, people that are obviously interested in selling books they're not encouraging people to read their Bible read anything but the Bible listen to anybody but God right listen to them listen to Rod listen to Stephen Furtick and this is the problem I think uh, with the world today people aren't reading their Bible they're listening to men just like what we see happening in Genesis 3 Eve doesn't listen to God she listens to the serpent who says yea has God said getting Eve to doubt the word of God so instead of listening to God you're gonna to listen to Steve Furtick, Rob Parsley and uh, this Didio guy I, as far as I'm concerned they're all in the same category right uh, Alan Didio yeah, they're all in league together they're all trying to make money and you listen to this guy talk mark historic messages like repairers of the breach raise the standard where have all the preachers gone and he has authored a brand new book called revival if this book is so powerful and so yeah, this guy's a great talker isn't he uh, I'm just smooth He's got a great voice for radio, huh? Um, but is this? I guess this is his channel, Encounter Today, and uh, he's got all these shorts, Portals to Hell. If you want to learn all about hell, I'm sure he can give you some great uh, 
thoughts and ideas about hell, but what about Jesus? What about the Bible? You got the beast, you got the Antichrist, you got the beast and the Antichrist. How about faith in the Lord Jesus Christ? What do you think about that? Anything at all about believing? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't see anything. Doesn't matter. Alright, anything at all about faith anything at all about the Bible anything at all so you got drunks you got antichrist you got hell you got the beast now Christian dating that's important <clears throat> I'm gonna tell you how to date that's great. I'm just not... To me, this is not my cup of tea, man. Are you ready for war? Uh, you better be ready for war, huh? The Harbinger. That's, see, this is not surprising. Jonathan Kahn. He calls himself Rabbi. Be curious if he calls him Rabbi, too. Even though Jesus says, Call no man on earth Rabbi. Here we go. Look at this guy. He tell me this guy's not Jewish. And Jews that today that call themselves Jews reject the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'll tell you what drives me nuts <clears throat> are these people that say these people that call themselves Jews reject the Lord Jesus Christ are God's chosen people. <clears throat> And I'm not kidding you. I, and I'm sure you've experienced it yourself. Another Jonathan Kahn. Uh, so, it, I mean, come on. I, if you have something specific that you would like me to address, I'll address it. But just an overview of this guy. John Osteen. Is that related to Joel Osteen? <laughs> uh, this is unbelievable. Yeah, just look at this. The guy's getting a million views here. Guy's super popular. Jack Van Impe, you love him. Right? What will New Jerusalem look like? That's a good question. Jack and Rexella. Gotta love those guys, huh? <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, obviously got issues with those guys. Schizophrenia. What to do when all hell breaks loose. There we go. Once saved. So if, let's see what he's preaching here. I want us to begin a journey tonight that is going to help us strengthen our faith in Jesus Christ and help us to become effective ministers of the gospel. After two decades of ministering to people and praying for people and loving on people, I can tell you this with absolute certainty. When someone comes into my office and they're sharing what their problem is and they're laying out the details, I can find out less about them by hearing all of those details about what's going on in their life and I can know less about how to fix their problem by hearing all of those details than I can if I hear their personal testimony of how they gave their life to Jesus Christ. And if I can hear from you how you gave your life to Jesus and what that experience was like, I can often gauge where you are in your spirituality. And sometimes I, I, I just Alright, so like let's use his same judgment against him all right so with what measure you meet <clears throat> excuse me for with what measure you meet it shall be used 
where is that? What is that verse? For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged, and with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. All right, so we're gonna where am I at here? All right, so one thing I notice here. And if I can hear from you how you gave your life to Jesus. How you gave your life to Jesus. All right. So judging by that standard, he's not looking at what Jesus has done, but rather what you have done for Jesus, given your life, ignoring the fact that Jesus has given his life for all of us. You want to look at a person and judge them by what they have done. Judge not what Jesus has done for you, but what you've done for Jesus, right? That's a problem. Jesus, and what that experience was like, I can often gauge where you are in your spirituality. And gauge, so judge, measure. Sometimes I, I, I just feel like that sometimes if there is a problem in the birthing it can produce a weak baby what the hell is he talking about and so as we as we as we go to John chapter number three I want us to begin to talk about the salvific life and over the next few services I'm going to tell you why I'm using this word and I'm not saying the saved life because we're going to get into what it means to really be saved and I'm going to make this startling statement, and I'm not going to feel like I have to explain it now. You're just going to have to come back to the later services. None of us in this building are saved. All right, so <clears throat> judging by his own words, he's not saved. All right, and <laughs> that's unbelievable. And yeah, not surprising. But uh, think about you and your life right now. Are you saved? He that believes on the Son has everlasting life. Right? Not surprised that this guy would say. Make the startling statement, and I'm not going to feel like I have to explain it now. You just have to come back to the later services. None of us in this building are saved. Not surprised that he would make such. A statement like that uh, it's sad it really is very sad what is that verse that I'm thinking of here I gotta find it and this is eternal life or and this is life eternal that they might know the the only okay that's not the verse I was looking for all right, so right there, that's it. First John five. I love this. Uh, the first, second, third books. Of John. I love all the books of John. Really, these I love all the Bible books. What am I talking about? These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye know. You ought to know you have eternal life. If you don't know it, how can you have peace? You can't. You cannot have peace if you don't know that you are saved, secured, sealed, sanctified unto the Lord Jesus Christ now and forever. Uh, and uh, another verse here. Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed. Ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. You're secure. You have everlasting life. And nothing can take that away. And I'd like to uh, point this out in Revelation 20 as well. That the second death has no power over you. There's no way that you can die the second death. The second death has no power over you. And of course, I like to go back to fear 
them. But what is that verse? Fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him, that is God, which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Right? So, um, the second death is the judgment of God when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. And the judgment of God is, are you saved or are you not saved? And it's not determined then. That is just the end of the world when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. It is determined already uh, if you are saved. You are saved forever. So when judgment comes, you're going to be lifted up. And first the dead in Christ, and then those of us which are alive and remain are caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air. So you're saved right now today. That's what's going to happen on Judgment Day. When Judgment Day comes and you are not saved, then you're gathered at our feet and fire comes down from heaven and devours all of you. All right, so this judgment is about are you saved or not saved. And so you're if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ today, you are saved today, right now. And you ought to know that. And you ought to be confident in that. Being confident of this very thing, that he which has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> All right. And then, of course, um, let's go Father Pluck. Um, my Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Of all which he has given me, I shall lose nothing. There's no possible way for you to lose your salvation once you are saved. And this is the Father's will which has sent me, that of all which he has given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. And then, of course, uh, you want to read a book that will change your life. You want to read one single chapter that takes maybe five minutes to read that'll change your life. It's John chapter 3. And specifically, this conversation he has with Nicodemus, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus says, How can a man be born when he is old? How can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water, and of spirit he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind blows where it lists, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the spirit now this is important to understand being born of the waters being born from your mother's womb all right you know when the water breaks then she's ready to give birth everybody is born of the water everybody's born of their mother but not everybody's born of the spirit so not everybody's born of the flesh of a of the the spirit from above. everybody's born of the flesh not everybody is born from the Spirit, which is from above. All right, there should be no doubt about that. Except a man be born of water and of Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the Spirit is Spirit. So when you are born of the flesh, you are that can you know you can die, but you cannot die and be reborn of the flesh. Die, be reborn of the flesh, and so on and so forth. The idea is ridiculous. And then also the same thing with the Spirit. Once you, once you are born of the Spirit, you are alive forever. Being born of the flesh, you are not alive forever. You have an opportunity for everlasting life. 
And that will only come when you're born of the Spirit of God. And God never dies. So once you are born of the Spirit of God, you shall never die. And of course, uh, numerous verses we could probably point to. And whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Believest thou this? And so, not surprised at all. A startling statement, and I'm not going to feel like I have to explain it now. You just have to come back to the later services. None of us in this building are saved. I don't doubt that at all. Again, by what measure you put on others, it shall be measured unto you. With what judgment you judge, it shall be judged upon you. Your own words condemn yourself. All right, so that's enough of that. Appreciate. If there's anything more you'd like to add for me to add, um, just let me know. My pleasure to look at this stuff. Okay. Good day.